Coco's. But I'm telling you right now, Coco's <laughs> is amazing. Um, As friends no Senshu ga ironna shitsumon ni kotaeru. Zen. Sebango Sanban no Pai Samba des. Samba to ibarete mas. Kotoshi de 13 nen me no kariya o mukatte imas. Uh, my name is Jacob Lampkin. I am number four. Uh, my teammates out here, they call me Jay for short. Uh, before I came to Japan, I was playing in Australia for a club called Mount Gambier. And I've always wanted to play in Japan and I'm just really excited to be here. And it's been a great experience so far. Hi, my name is uh, Cameron Parker. Uh, I'm number one. My nickname is Cam. Where I played before this uh, was Portland State University. This is my first year, so uh, playing professionally. And the reason why I joined this club was because, like, my agent said it'd be an excellent opportunity. So I decided to go for it. Hi, uh, my name is Nicholas. My jersey number this year is number seven. My nickname is Nick. Uh, that's what most everybody calls me. Um, I played in Austria last year before I came out here for uh, the Nord Dragons. I had a meeting with management, GM, the president, the head coach, um, and I thought it was a great fit for me. Um, and of course, like these guys said, I'd love to explore this part of the world. Um, you know, what not better place in Tokyo to explore? Uh, for me, I would probably say flashy, and I would say the reason for that would be because I like to get in the paint, I like to pass it out, I kind of have unorthodox type of moves, and I would say that, and I like to get others involved with like different type of style passes that you might not normally see from everybody else. That's a really good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of tough to follow up that. That's nice. <laughs> For me, I would go with the word uh, grind. Mm. I'm 36 six years old. I came to Japan when I was 17 and I was grinding since day one. And I'm still here playing basketball. So. Simple as that. That's good. Yeah. What you got, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I'm trying to look for another word. I want to say two words, like a unique experience. I think I play differently than what I think uh, maybe imports in this league play like. Um, I'm kind of like in between when it comes to positions and stuff, so I think I bring like a unique perspective style. and a unique style to the game. So that's why I would probably say unique. That's nice. Yeah. So, uh, Jay? Man, I don't even know what to say. Um, I can think of as tough maybe because I had to go through a lot in my career. Um, I thought basketball would be over for me. Um, I went through two really bad uh, broken foot and I uh, thought my basketball would be over and yeah, like I said, I've had to go through a lot and be tough and, you know, work hard and get me to where I am today. Most memorable moment in your basketball career? Uh, well, I'd say for me, uh, there was a college game. Uh, we were going through a really tough patch and um, we played in front of 20,000 people at uh, a school called BYU and we beat them and uh, after the game, like it was really quiet because like they had really loud fans the whole time and like we were going through a really tough time, like I said, during the season and I had a good game and the crowd just went quiet and after the game we went and had a huge snowball fight in their parking lot and it was just a really good moment for our team and like I'll never forget that with those guys. I just have a lot of good memories, but like including like college stuff, like we had a game, we had to play a really good college in Tokyo. No one was expecting us, like you know, what I'm saying to beat, to beat them. Obviously, like mm -hmm. even my teammates. <laughs> and we come in that game. I think that I set the record that game. I had uh, 33 rebounds that game. Yeah, that's a lot. Are you nervous and stuff? No, because I, I say something, 
my team and my team will respond in the way I want it. So I have to, I have to show them something. So we just come, you know what I'm saying, from the game, we start with the 12 0 run, like three true pointers mm -hmm. from the first two minutes. They take the timeout and they just lead us like until the game ends. We end up winning by like three, like something like that. But you know what I'm saying, that was a good win for us. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a lot of boxing out. Yeah, a lot of boxing out. Coach Amada would be very proud. I'm kind of in the same boat as Sam, where there's a lot of memories. But we had a crazy comeback in college. We were like, played a team in conference. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, like they were one and we were like three at the time or something like that. Um, and we have like the biggest. Ooh, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think we have like the biggest comeback in the shortest amount of time in NCAA history. It was insane. It was like we were down 19 with like a minute 47 to play. Yeah, and we hit like eight threes. It was insane. Yeah, um, it all started. I hit I hit two two threes in the corner, and then our team just started getting going, and then. Um, our defense was just the impeccable. Yeah. It was insane. <laughs> so many it was insane. Now, actually, they didn't turn the ball over. They just couldn't make free throws. And then we came back. So, yeah, I, like I said, I don't really remember the numbers like I should, but like being in that moment, being in there, and like all the fans in our home going crazy and just like it was magical. It's like what it's what basketball players dream about. Like they they we dream and pray that we get one game like that. That atmosphere. I had 24 assists in a Division One basketball game, so I have the all-time NCAA um, Division One record, which is something that I can say everyone that played basketball, you know, in America or college basketball, nobody's ever had. So that would be the most memorable moment for me. I, I passed Trey Young, who's in the NBA, and he had 22 in a game. So just knowing that I passed people that you know are in the NBA and have made it to a high level, kind of you know, makes it more memorable for me. And it's something that um, I get others involved. So like, I, I'm not trying to score, go out there and score 30 points, 24 assists, because all my other teammates scored. And I also had zero points that game. So nobody's ever had 24 assists and zero points before. You didn't score once. <laughs> I, I, didn't shoot, I didn't shoot the ball once. It's not that I didn't score once, I didn't shoot one field ball. Free throw? Wow. Zero points. Zero points. <laughs> <laughs> That's the craziest talent. Wild stat, man. It's unbelievable. Have you been playing any other sports besides basketball? Me, I was playing soccer all elementary school time. So it's pretty popular in your country. Yeah, pretty popular. Everybody plays soccer except you know our people. Mm -hmm. So, what but you basketball? basketball, the first time. I mean, my big brother was you know, playing basketball, but I was not really messing with him. But the first time I went to a, to a basketball court and they gave me the ball, they teach me how to shoot. My first shot, I made it. And I remember that. I think that's how I fell in love with basketball. So I just stopped playing soccer at all. Like, I was just messing with basketball. Even at home, I was playing with my brother. We using like tennis ball, whatever we have. We make a rim in the like, whole way of our house. My daddy like piss off every time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we were just doing it and like at one point I just feel like I needed to, you know what I'm saying, to get better. Like and I had like one guy, you know what I'm saying, that was, you know what I'm saying, teaching us. So luckily the guy had some connection with some guys that were playing over here, you know what I'm saying, in Japan, they had the idea that they can bring some high school kids over here and put them in high school. Competition will be interesting. And they just like, they just picked me up. I was lucky. I've never seen a 6'9 soccer player either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, I, good was not, I was not 6'9 at that time. I was taller than my little friends, but, you know. Uh, I did not. I was the opposite of Samba. Um, I wasn't coordinated enough to play soccer. So, um, but I played American football growing up, and then I went to a tournament when I was like 12, 12 years old. And I was pretty quick, um, but I ran like a post route, if you know what that is. What, you know what, what position did you play? Wide receiver. Oh, wide receiver, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was just taller than everybody, and uh, we ran like a 10-yard like a post. Um, and I went out there, jumped up in the air, because my cousin knew I was just taller than everybody. So threw it up, caught it in the air, I got hit in my chest, 
And then I woke up on the sideline and I was like, yeah, football ain't for me no more. And I said, yeah. Yeah, so ever since then, that summer, I kind of transitioned and I was like, okay, let me, let me, you know, start taking basketball more seriously. Because before that, like, I just kind of played basketball for fun, and, you know, in the park and stuff. But it wasn't until, like, high school when I started, like, really, really, like, oh, okay, I need to take this stuff seriously, so. Uh, I ran uh, track and cross country, uh, like long distance. Uh, and actually, I was pretty good at it. I went to nationals for cross country, and then I went to nationals for track too, and um, the 800, and I was number two in the nation for the 800. So I could have actually, you know, put a ran high level track, but I was kind of tired of running in circles, and in Oregon, it rains a lot. So like, I didn't really like running track in the rain and sitting out during the meets all day and just having it rain and be cold. So, um, and I always knew that I, I would, could be good at basketball and I, would, I liked basketball a lot more than I liked track and cross country. So, and after my sophomore year of high school, that was when I quit and then just stayed strictly to basketball. Yeah, I would run, yeah. Do that. Long Five Ks, oh, 10 Ks, yeah. yeah. Too big for the, Jumping over hay bales. What are you talking about, Tommy? You should love to run. I mean, um, growing up, I, I came from like a baseball family, so uh, baseball was really big. Um, my uncle played Major League for a long time, so it was um, a big deal, I guess, to play baseball. So I played for probably eight, nine years. I also played American football, too, for about eight, nine years. Um, like Nick said, like I took a couple of hits and like I was like, yeah, like it's just, you know, some of these guys are just different. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they just don't care. Um, and then I, I actually took a hit in baseball, and, and if you guys don't know, like a baseball is really hard. And I took a couple pretty big hits from the baseball, and it's just, yeah, it really wasn't my thing. And I grew a lot, uh, like when I was in eighth, ninth grade, um, and I started to get interested from colleges. And my parents were like, "Look, just stick with basketball, and you know, see the, see where that can take you." I was actually a really good swimmer too. Uh, I was on the swim team for like probably four or five years. So I enjoyed swimming a lot too. Yeah. Did you shave your legs and head? Nah, I didn't <laughs> shave. I didn't shave, but I used to like. I don't know. I would have never thought that. Yeah, I was a good swimmer. How do you find your experience in Japan since coming here? Yeah, I've, so far I've loved Japan. I mean, Japan people are very welcoming and they're very nice people. The food out here is actually really good too. I feel like you know, being in Tokyo, you can try a new restaurant like every night experience new things. Like I've been learning how to use chopsticks now and I feel like I'm, I'm getting it down pretty good now. Uh, I've actually been here uh, six years ago. Uh, in high school we took a trip here and we played basketball so this is now my second time uh, being in Tokyo but I really enjoy it here. Uh, I've been eating ramen. I have ramen about five, five nights out of the week and then uh, we went to, uh, me, Jacob and Nick went to a baseball game uh, in the city and we got to see a lot of cool things and then uh, last weekend we actually went to Shinjuku too and we got to experience you know new places and uh, new restaurants and just a new culture and obviously the fans here have been really welcoming and uh, super nice like Jacob said so in Oregon or even if I didn't touch a basketball maybe I would have never ended up here so. For me so far my experience in, in Japan has been exceeded my expectations. Um, I think me and my wife we talk about this all the time the culture here is just so respectful and courteous um, to everyone. Um, you know, and I've lived all over the world, you know, I've been in Europe and in a whole bunch of different countries, and I can say without a doubt, like Japan has been one of my favorite places. You know, like I would like to take a trip maybe to Okinawa after the season, you know, let everything kind of, and like I said, it's been nothing but great experiences. The food has been absolutely amazing. Um, I'm gonna butcher this name, but there's a chicken spot, Coco something. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, Coco's is amazing. Um, it was really, really good. It was really, really good. We went there and, and it was simple. Yeah. Went in there, didn't have a whole lot on the menu, but what they did have, it was absolutely amazing to eat. You know, there was some concern, you know, like, okay, how am I gonna get around, things like that, but especially from our, our team too, you know, helping us out, get settled and everything. Everything's been such a smooth transition. I got no no complaints. I love, I love Japan. So. What kind of um, Domino's? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm not Domino's, but I mean, sushi, like, it's really nice, like, there's a 7-Eleven right next to my house, like, and I don't, I mean, I, I try not to go all the time, but like, the, 
the convenience of it is really nice and so I've been eating a lot of sushi and stuff like that and trying different things and it's actually these pancakes that I tried that are really good. They're like syrup and butter inside. Mm. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, you talking about he don't go there all the time, yeah. every day. Yeah. He gave me them today. They're like already pre-packaged. You just open them up and oh, then okay. they're together and then they have the syrup and right, the right, butter. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. He made me a believer. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. They're good. They're and good. You're trying those? Sticky yeah. boy. You like that one? Yeah. Have you tried those? <laughs> nah. No. And Jacob can really put y'all on too. He, he the king of 7-Eleven. Check it out. Did, did Caitlin teach you this? The pancakes with the chicken in it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Fire. New Pancake, favorite. Pancake <laughs> with the chicken, the fried chicken inside of it. Ooh. They got that too? No, no, you gotta, no, you gotta make chicken. it. You gotta buy the chicken oh, and yeah. then put it inside. Yeah. Oh, that's the <laughs> best set. Ooh, another one too. All my coffee drinkers out there, the caramel sabas uh, protein milk, mm. Caldees or something. With that coffee, those two mixed together, it's amazing. Great coffee. Oh, really okay. Just uh, tell the fan about what's good about the. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, what just said? So I gotta say something about Cam. All right, perfect. Uh, <laughs> so I would say Cam is like a really exciting player for our team. Uh, there's probably not too many guys in our league like Cameron. Uh, he's really exciting to play with, and you know he always finds open guys and you know I've missed a few of his assists so far but I think you know I've converted a few too and you know hopefully we can partner up and have a lot more together and you know it's just getting started like you know he this is his first year being a pro and he's only getting better every day and you know it's exciting to see his growth. Uh, I would say Nick I think a lot of things like maybe that fans wouldn't be able to see from the outside looking in would just be how vocal he is. You know, when we're in the locker room at halftime, he's always saying something. In practice, he's always saying something. And I think when our team faces adversity, when we get in huddles, he's the main guy. Hey, we got to stick together. And it's always positive things. And I feel like that's a trait that, you know, not a lot of people have. Because when you face adversity, you can either get negative with somebody, you can get down with somebody. But the way that he tells us things, we know that it's out of love. And we know that he really just wants to win. And he does a good job at connecting with the Japanese guys as well so even after practice he's doing extra reps with uh, our Japanese guards he makes sure to uh, stay connected with everybody on the team uh, it's my first year you know playing pro so all these guys and you know especially Nick have really helped me you know play by play game by game and even just off the court like hey this is what you should expect this is what you know my past experiences have been so I feel like if you're looking for you know a great fit then Minus these guys, he's like the main guy that's really helped my transition game to me. Yeah, I ain't that good, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you, Kim. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, Samba's game is great to watch um, from a fan's perspective. Um, I think he looks very, um, from the outside, looks very, um, one dimensional but as soon as you see him play you see that there's so many more dimensions to his game right you know obviously he can shoot it you know a lot of people at his height can't really shoot it um, and you know his ability to drive and, and uh, his playmaking and, and something that, that's really valued that's kind of hard to see you know maybe long-term fans could see and stuff but his poise right so he's been playing in Japan you know in Japan for so long he has this um, experience about himself that he knows when things are supposed to happen. He can tell the rhythm of games out here, and he can he can guide us through momentum shifts and stuff in the game. And that's like really, really crucial. And another thing, just like kind of to backpack off of what Cam said, but Samba has been an amazing bridge for the imports and the Japanese players as far as like connecting with one another, understanding one another, um, especially in the heat of the games. You know, like when we don't have our translator, Mr. Suzuki, it's just us five out there, he's an amazing, an amazing tool for us that we get to use. Um, yeah, he's been overall an amazing teammate. Appreciate those players, especially when you get later down into the season, you know, and you get into the rut of it, and think days start to get long, and, and games start to get um, come up on you quicker and quicker. You know, it's gonna be good to have a guy like Samba around. So, yeah, it's gonna get pretty. Appreciate it. Me, <laughs> what I can't say about Jay. Uh, what I like about Jay is like, Jay got the same attitude every day, like, 
everybody's saying that he's, he's pretty poised. So sometimes watching him in the game, I feel like there are a lot of stuff I can learn from him. The way he's poised, no matter like how the game tempo is going, he's always himself. And that strength right there. Uh, Basketball-wise, like what he's doing for the team is pretty amazing. Like, I mean, he put his body on the line, fighting with like other teams' bigs, and like when I mean, like that's huge for us. Because, like, you're the only one that can do it in this team. So. <laughs> <laughs> I leave it to you. Yeah, so, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he's he's doing that like with like full responsibility. Like you know what I'm saying? That, I mean, that helps a lot. And like when the team really need him, like on like. He do a lot of stuff that don't show on the stat sheet. Like he put his body on the line, like he can be like a tip rebound, like huge offensive rebound, like scoring wise, post up, he's doing all that for the team. And I really appreciate it because I can't do that. I know, I, I mean, I'll be in the same position sometimes, like to do the same thing, but like him doing that for the team, like for me, I, I really appreciate that. And I want him to keep doing that work too. And I'll follow it. Please, mm -hmm. Nick too. <laughs> yeah, so please rest. As friends talk to you on a fan of Mira San, my team was on a Kakai Nagara, team Yoko State, and on Shai Oku, a Caterio Ni, my Mina Shokeme, and on Dorio Gushir no day, home away more and on Zehi, my Shani Potaka, and on Yoshi Domas, Zehi on Yoshino, the Shokai Shamas. I think you know the fans have been great so far. Even fans traveling uh, on the road, it's been great to see. Having your guys' support means a lot to us. Uh, you know, like I said, we're gonna keep getting better every day, and you know, appreciate the support all season. Obviously, transitioning from America to a whole other country is, you know, can be hard in a lot of different ways, but. Uh, you know, after games, I always get messages like uh, DMs from fans, you know, just sending me positive messages, win or loss. Um, I've also gotten some really cool photos from a lot of you guys in my games, too, and I haven't really, you know, experienced that in America. And so, and even after games, even when we lose, uh, you guys are commenting on our social media is like, stick with it, we'll get there. Like I haven't seen any negative comments and after the games, you guys are there to high five us and you guys all want photos with us and it means a lot to see, you know, the community and you know, how encouraging everybody is uh, within the organization. Yeah, hey there, Earth friends. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, we're so grateful for you guys' support. Um, on and off the court, you know, every time I see anybody in public, it's been such a, a pleasant surprise, um, you know, all the support, all the fans. I've played in environments where we didn't have a ton of fans, um, and how much better it is when you do have fans. You know, we're a new team, stick with us, um, and we're going to give all we got out there for you guys. Um, and like I said, just thank you so much for your support. <laughs> あの、ぜひ会場に足運んで、あの、応援の方よろしくお願いします。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイバイ。バイ